Good afternoon and good morning. I trust you can see my slide. Good morning. Um, in South Africa, it's good afternoon. You are in South Africa, no, Bernard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my American friends are still... Well, you are still South Africa. <laughs> um, okay, we have quite a few collaborators or authors on this paper, and the reason for that is one can almost divide the, the project in two parts. One involved with shell model mainly, and one with astrophysical implications. So the first five authors were mainly involved with the shell model, and the second five authors mainly with astrophysical implications. Okay, just a brief introduction what I'm going to run through. Okay, if we look basically uh, at this NZ diagram, uh, we've seen yesterday and today quite often the RP process running along here. Um, sequential neutron absorption, uh, very, very high dense temp high temperature environments, but the uh, RP um, proton P gamma process runs around along this area close to the proton drip line. So we're going to discuss mainly NOVAs. And we know that on, on uh, NOVAs basically, um, let's define a classical NOVA, cataclysmic variable, which is only seen to erupt once, although they can recur, they're supposed to recur on, on a long term. Explosions not from thermonuclear runaways on the surface of white dwarfs, accreting hydrogen rich matter in close binary systems, either a red giant or uh, a standard uh, star on the main sequence from a low mass stellar companion. Uh, it's just an artist impression on the left, your uh, biggest star, and matter is accreted on, onto the white dwarf. They sporadically inject material uh, into uh, the interstellar medium, but not a great deal. It's estimated that it's usually something less than 1%. But evidence suggests that they are important source of very specific nucleides, uh, some, some of which are uh, mentioned below. Okay, so difficult to do measurements for many, many of these uh, reactions, so many cases, and that's what we will do to a large extent in this particular project is to rely on theoretical input. And then candidates for pre-solar nova grains have been found in primitive meteorites and can be identified in principle by the isotopic ratios. And we will be focusing mainly on the sulfur 34, sulfur 32 ratio. Okay, so the purpose of this work is to first of all calculate the rates and then also uncertainties for those particular reactions and investigate the impacts on the predicted ratios uh, or ratio of this sulfur 34 to sulfur 32 for pre solar nova grains. Okay, so the calculations I said often requires mainly theoretical input. Uh, these are the calculated gamma decay widths, the proton decay widths, which depend very much on the spectroscopic factors as well as energies. Now, I have a little video here made by Henrik Schatz and, and his group at uh, Michigan State University, uh, but it's actually not for, for NOVA, it's actually for an X-ray burster which occurs on the surface uh, of a neutron star where the gravitational field is much higher, the temperatures are much higher, you have many more reactions and many more nuclei produced. But the idea is to give you some, the idea is basically the same except that the NOVA peters out at an earlier point. And the colors was co correspond to particular abundances. And of course, an ANOVAs radiate mainly 
visible light and ultraviolet, whereas uh, in, in, um, on an X-ray burst, you get mainly X-ray radiation. Now, to make movies like this, you need diagrams <laughs> like the one shown, uh, which is a collection of uh, single neutron separation energies and two neutron separation energies. Um, let me just go back with some historical background. In, in 2000, uh, Alex Brown, myself, and Robbie Lindsay, before we defected to applied physics, did some calculations of Skirma Um on, on uh, mirror nuclei calculating Coulomb displacements energies. And we got some very nice results, like, which just gave us confidence that we should apply this across the stability line for neutron rich nuclei for which the masses are well known. And then we can predict masses on the uh, proton rich side. Okay, so there's one experiment, experimental, uh, data by Gillespie very recently, where they measured uh, spectroscopic factors and we actually do a comparison uh, with some of our calculations. Then for the second reaction ending in argon 35, well, actually two reactions if you take into account the ground state and the first excited state, um, much, not much known about that particular reaction due to a lack of experimental nuclear physics. Some energies have been measured, but very little known about spins, for example. Some new levels were fairly recently determined, but again, spins and parities are largely absent. So we have to calculate those. Okay, so we do the calculations in a tool, zero plus one H bar model space, using a combination of different interactions with new shell X. For the positive parity states, SD shell model space with the universal, relatively new USDB interaction. For negative parity states, we have to include the 1H bar excitations. And this involves one nucleon from the P shell to the SD shell, or one from the SD shell to the FP shell. Uh, in that case, the Warburton Brown potential, also been around for quite some time, model WBP. Hamiltonian was started with, but replacing the old SD shell USD part with USDB. The wave functions were dominated by the SD to FB shell excitations. And that part of the WBP interaction is based on the WBMB interaction obtained for the SD FB model space. And then in addition, we found that we had to adjust the, the energies of the strongest states in one nuclear transport for to get reasonable agreement with measured spectroscopic factors, which I show in the next diagram. And we get pretty reasonable agreement. So on the left, we have an experiment and on the theory right, above the threshold is not much measured for the experiment, but you can see that this theory at least reproduces some of the stronger states sub threshold, which gives us some confidence that we are on the right track. Uh, it's a standard um, expression for calculating uh, basically the cross sections. And two terms are important, the exponential term containing the resonance energy. And because of that exponential dependence, it's very really sensitive to, to the, the energy. And then the omega gamma factor written out a little lower. Uh, and then of course, the little diagram on the left indicating basic process of exciting particular resonance, uh, which then decays. Uh, in the calculations, the, the gamma widths were generally much larger, but because of this cancellation effect, it turns out that the proton widths dominate. So that's why we spent quite a bit of time on trying to get accurate spectroscopic factors. Okay, so to experiment by Gillespie, uh, measured 21 states, with the reaction rate could be determined from that, and we do a comparison of our results uh, with theirs. And I'll get to that in a moment. 
Now, it's important these days to have uncertainty estimates for, for any such calculations. And in the old days, in the previous um, few papers on, on uh, the astrophysics RP process, um, Alex and I wanted to introduce some kind of a measure of uncertainty. And what we often did was just use different interactions and then just show you know, the, the variations due to them. But the problem with that is that you actually are often comparing uh, the, the, the bad parts of, of not so good um, effective interactions. So a better method was suggested by Richard Longland uh, using Stardub, you input all your known uh, uncertainties and it will crank out some ranges or limits corresponding to uncertainty. Uh, so we have a low and a high rate corresponding to 0.16 and 0.84 quartiles. And we indicate that there. We don't indicate the median rate in the top one. We just indicate the, the extremities corresponding to the uncertainties. Uh, one thing you see is that the par positive parity states contribute relatively little. And then in the bottom one, you find very specific contributions from, from the main or dominant resonances, which hopefully then uh, will serve as, as an incentive for experiments, experimentalists to, to go and find them. And the, the details are all in a complicated diagram like this with all the information, spectroscopic factors, the widths and so on, and omega gamma. Okay, the next one we compare with Gillespie, and we see generally good agreement, except for the low temperature re uh, region. So we obviously also indicate um, the uncertainties in the Gillespie data. And we also have, uh, just for fun, the House of Fischbach, statistical model indicated. Uh, here's a more recent uh, experiment from Cetudinia. It disagrees a bit with, with the lower limit, but also the low temperature discrepancy you see there. Okay, so let's look at the reactions going to argon 35. Um, many of the previous work just worked from assuming the interacting nuclei were in the ground state, but shot st showed that in the particular example, fluorine 32 to argon 33, that the capture on the low lying first excited state made quite a contribution. And then there were other uh, indications as well by a paper from the Schutte, uh, somehow I never published, but it did indicate again, there was significant enhancement in a number of cases when you do include excited states, or at least the first excited state. Uh, so that gives us a stellar enhancement factor, just tells you how much the reaction rate uh, changes due to incorporating uh, your excited state. And for chlorine, uh, we have uh, an isomeric first excited state for those are the parameters. And the contribution to the rate was included uh, in our work. Okay, so we come to the, the abundances. Again, uncertainties in the reaction rate translate to uncertainties in some of the models on classical NOVA. Um, people have an interest in the 34 sulfur 32 uh, ratio. Uh, these abundances have the potential to aid in the classification of pre solar ga grains. Now, fast thermonuclear reaction rate would lead to the destruction of chlorine 34 and largely bypass the production of 34 sulfur, uh, which is the beta decay daughter of chlorine 34. So the isotopic ratio depends strongly on that particular reaction rate. Uh, this just indicates the standard gamma peak, which is a combination. Now, this is not for our particular case, but similar masses, uh, which is a combination of Coulomb penetrability and the Boltzmann factor. Okay, now we make a comparison for the ground state, uh, chlorine 34 P gamma. Uh, again, we see the positive parity states contribute relatively li little. We show the uncertainties in, in our work. And again, the, the strongest um, resonances indicated, which are all their details are in tables like this. Uh, 
And then for uh, some of the icons in my way, but I presume that's for the first excited state. Um, and again, the, the, the dominant resonances in this case. And again, the table with all the details of that. Okay, let's look at the nuclear synthesis part. Uh, the ratios were predicted by rather large calculation, MISA, new grid, multi-zone, uh, oxygen neon NOVA model done mainly by Denisenkov. And the thermal communication between the ground and the excited states was incorporated. Uh, the preliminary ratio uncertainties ending up in argon 35 were less than 13%. Uncertainties from uh, sulfur 34 to chlorine 35, a little larger. And then coming to some conclusions, uh, in the comparison of our calculations with ending in chlorine 35 with Gillespie was generally good agreement, except for the low temperature re region, it's about an order of magnitude or more discrepancy. Uh, the contribution, contribution from negative parity states generally dominated, we indicated the dominant resonances. Uh, theoretical analysis for uh, chlorine, both, both states, ground and excited state ending in argon 35, also show that the total rate for negative parity states is also larger than for positive parity. So that many negative parity states in the energy region above facial dominate the reaction rate. Uh, calculate the reaction rates take into account the relative populations of ground and first excited states. And the calculations, of course, identify uh, to the extent that they are correct, the most prominent resonances in the reaction rates which should then serve as a guide for experiments um, as the spin parity assignments and most prominent resonances and their relative strengths are given. Uh, and again, we talked about the uncertainties before that was applied to all the calculations. Okay, the isotopic, just the results for the isotopic rate, ratio, it was find, found that the, the general mass fraction ratio was ejected to be 0.049 and then allowing some uh, variation within the uncertainties the ratio changes somewhat um, the chlorine uh, sulfur to chlorine rate can be varied within its uncertainties the ratio doesn't change that dramatically varying all three reaction rates again uh, leads to a reasonably narrow range so evidently the nuclear physics uncertainties calculated uh, have only a moderate impact on, on the uncertainties associated with that uh, isotopic ratio. And then for people who want more detail, there's a lot of detail in, in this paper, which appeared quite recently, summarizing basically everything that I've uh, talked about. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Berna. Another uh, round of applause for you. Thank you. Um, any questions? I have uh, Daniel Doherty is asking. You can talk. Oh, I, I can just ask if you like. Hi, Berna. And I, I want. Did you publish um, gamma branches for your states in argon thirty-five? I just. I, I don't remember seeing them in your paper. Just with a view to future experiments or data that we already have. Um. Yeah, we, we probably didn't show everything in the paper. We certainly have them. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're interested, I, I can pass them on to you. But we, we looked at all, all possibilities and yeah, that we could squeeze out of the, the calculations. Yeah, that, that would be really yeah, useful. I'll we have to find what the significance is you know, at, at, at this point without actually looking back at the, the, the yeah. paper. And, and maybe just as a comment, I mean, is it surprising that the um, sulfur 34 p gamma reaction rate has such a larger uncertainty than the chlorine 34 p gamma rate. It's sort of easier to access chlorine 35 than argon 35. Yeah, so that's, that's not, that's, well, it's something to be investigated. It's not yeah. any idea why that precisely, what is happening there. It's just a 
matter of data uh, or, I have, or uh, perhaps in the calculations. I have a question, Werner. So uh, I remember going through all these RP process nuclei and comparing the collectivity of these nuclei with the mirror pair on the line of stability. And uh, the, typically the, the B2 values and the M1 strengths were larger for, this, uh, for the RP process nuclei. Something, a curiosity, which I never figured out. Uh, obviously you have more proton rich on this side, Mm -hmm. But according to a spin uh, symmetry, they should have similar E2, I mean, similar uh, matrix elements. What do you think? Yeah, well, this is a bit of a tricky one. I don't know. One has to, has to look at the systematics of that. It's not something that's, you know, it, that, that's really bothered us so far. Um, you say they are systematically larger. They're systematically larger. Yeah. That's right. Um, yeah, it's, it's not obvious why, why. Alfredo, Alfredo can answer the question. Alfredo? Yeah. Well, when you go to the mirrors, the, the, the wave function, well, the wave function is uh, exactly the same. But in one case, you have protons and neutrons. And protons have a charge, and neutrons don't have a charge. Then the B of it is, or any, any transition is different. No, no, that's not that's not the case because you no, can't, no, it can be different. It can, it can be, yeah, have a lot of mixing. Sometimes it's very similar. If you have this, depends very much on the structure. Because right. obviously, you imagine that you have effective charges equal to zero, and you have calcium forty one and scanium forty one. In right. calcium forty one, you will have no electromagnetic transition. And in a scanning 41, you will have. That's right. And you don't break any uh, symmetry. It's just that in one case, you have protons and neutrons. And this one is. No, no, no. But, 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 uh, but, in, but if you can, you can play with effective charges, and doesn't make any difference. That's the, no, that's no, the it makes a difference. If you take the standard effective charges that explain the things in this case, in one case, the neutron will have 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and the proton 1.5. And this will give you the difference, a factor of three. Uh, yeah. In the middle of the shells, when you have all the configuration, neutrons and protons are, 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 are combined like in a cocktail, the very, quite often you have very similar results. But it's not yeah. compulsory. It's not all the cases, and it is not compulsory. Right. OK, I was just looking at, the, at some of the cases like uh, Sodium 21, neon 21, uh, um, sodium 20, fluorine 20. Uh, you do share more calculations and compare magnesium 22, neon 22, you know, all these guys, doesn't matter how much you increase the, the effective charges for the, for, the, for the proton reach, you can never reach the, the collective values that they are measured experimentally. Magnesium 23, sodium 23, um, I have, they are uh, very different. They are very different. Let me let me show you quickly. I mean, uh, once we are, let me share. Can, can I share the screen, um, Werner, for a sec? Can you stop sharing? Sorry, no. Can you please stop sharing the screen? Oh, should I stop sharing? Okay. Please. 